thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, very good. Well, well, first of all, thank you for uh, including me and the Fletcher School in this discussion. It's an uh, important topic. And uh, as somebody who observes uh, the Indo-Pacific professionally, I'm looking forward to hearing everybody's commentary. I think uh, I was asked to kind of frame things of uh, of what my thoughts on the on the Biden administration's Asia policy, um, and I'm going to speak about four different dimensions: uh, security policy, trade, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. And so, let me start with the first context that um, I think that COVID-19 has disrupted international affairs and global trade uh, sufficiently enough that we that there's a there's an opportunity for reform of, of international institutions, alliances, and, uh, and multilateralism. And that's an opportunity for the Biden administration, uh, but it has many competing priorities. So we'll see how they're able to do it. But uh, generally, uh, changes in the international sphere tend to happen in very compressed time periods after a period of change. And, and the COVID-19 crisis did cause a disruption globally in, in trade um, and that has uncovered all kinds of of new dynamics uh, that I think will be um, will be dealt with by policymakers globally for the next uh, two or three years. So for the Bi for the Biden administration, their number one priority right now is to get the COVID crisis in the United States under control. That's not as easy as it should be, uh, but and so but that will take a lot of the administration's attention. So will involve uh, clear communication, the rollout of the uh, vaccine, uh, probably additional stimulus from what we just saw yesterday. Um, and uh, that will be uh, uh, the number one priority for the first 100 days of the Biden administration. Uh, but so far, he is, built, he is building a team with uh, experienced people. And so I think they will be able to uh, hit the ground running a little faster than previous in new administrations. Um, and for from a foreign policy perspective, I think their number one goal will be to rebuild alliances and uh, and enhance diplomatic cooperation um, across the world, uh, but certainly in the Indo-Pacific um, and uh, as well as in the North Atlantic. Uh, and then they've by by their appointments and what they've said, one of their main uh, global priorities is global climate change. So we will likely see the Biden administration rejoining the Paris Agreement and then working um, to to push that forward. That's going to be, I think, there'll be fewer barriers internationally and more barriers domestically. But because of his deep experience in the Senate. I, I am cautiously optimistic that Biden will be able to bridge some gaps with the Republican controlled Senate in the United States. So well, regardless of what happens in the in the Georgia elections runoffs in January, it's going to be a very close Senate, very narrow majority in the House. So he's going to have to navigate that and it will be challenging. But I do think there are enough moderate Republicans who want to collaborate with him that there there will be progress. So. The, the uh, I think we will see some return of what the Obama administration's policies were, but I also think that the uh, regional dynamics in the Indo-Pacific have changed significantly since 2016. And so there, there will be updates. And the, uh, the Trump administration did push boundaries. Um, they, they weren't necessarily um, as, as as capable of kind of um, uh, having a really coherent and, and consistent and well-planned policy, but they but they did push boundaries. And I think that did uh, give, that gives the Biden administration an opportunity to come in knowing what is possible, but do it in a kind of smarter and more thoughtful way. Uh, so, you know, the, from, so let's talk security first. So, Clearly a multipolar world. This was something before even Trump that was emerging. Um, I think the enhanced cooperation with the quad countries is is one of the bigger developments of 2020. Um, and that, that's gonna continue, I would suspect, under the Biden administration. Um, and uh, 
I think at this stage, in in a large part, probably because of China's actions during 2020, China is seen as a competitor by both parties in the United States, and that's increasingly uh, seen that way. And so there's going to be a continued push to treat China as a as a, a geopolitical competitor and therefore build alliances to balance against that in the region. Um, I do think there will be more diplomacy, more uh, more non-military investments by the U.S. government and the use of those tools by Biden. Uh, Tony Blinken, at, Blinken as Secretary of State will be very familiar with the diplomatic uh, diplomatic realm and have prior relationships. So I think that will that will be useful. Um, moving on to two, because I only have eight minutes here. Um, trade. I'm less optimistic on trade. Uh, trade has become a, a political issue that's challenging in the United States. I think it's an unclear path forward. Um, it really depends on on Biden's relationship with the Senate and and how they can move the trade agenda forward. I do think there will be uh, areas of cooperation, particularly with regard to um, IP enforcement and any unfair Chinese trade practices, and that the U.S. and its alliances will be able to to form a more united front under a Biden administration than they maybe were under a, a Trump administration. Uh, with Hong Kong, I think that that's what's been surprising to me looking at that is is how silent uh, Britain has been um, on that as the former colonial power um, and how relatively quiet kind of all the different um, players in the in the Pacific have been. I think it's in part because there's not much that can be done externally. Um, and uh, and but all besides sort of diplomatic protests uh, and the the US was not leading from the front under Trump there. We could see some changes, at least in rhetoric, from the Biden administration to impose at least some diplomatic costs to to any further changes in in Hong Kong that reduce its independence. Um, but we, you know, it'll be. I, I'm not sure how much will actually change, just because there's so many other competing priorities, um, and so. But I wanted to address it because, of course, it's an important issue in in the in the in the context uh, for Taiwan. I do think we're going to see continued arms sales. Biden has been a longstanding supporter of Taiwan, um, and so I think that it will probably be quieter, probably more coordinated support of Taiwan. So less, um, you know, less sort of in the face of the Chinese. Um, so probably fewer senior visitors. But there still will be a lot of cooperation in the background. So that's kind of how I see. That's how I sort of see the world here in December of 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 twenty twenty, looking to twenty twenty one, and I look forward to the conversation.